Next year's voters will decide if cities and counties will be allowed to expand rent control in California. Similar measures have already been shot down twice in the past five years, but supporters are determined that this time it will pass. CBS 8's Richard Allen has the details. And to qualify for the ballot, supporters of the Justice for Renters Act needed 601,000 signatures, but ended up getting 200,000 more than that. We gathered over 800,000 signatures across the state in all 58 counties. Susie Shannon is policy director of Housing is a Human Right, a nonprofit based in Southern California and one of the biggest supporters of the Justice for Renters Act that will now appear on the November 2024 ballot. It allows cities and counties to expand rent control in California. If it passes, this act would repeal a current state law that prohibits rent control from being placed by cities and counties on apartments built after 1995, as well as on any single family homes. From a renter's point of view, I I wouldn't argue. Taylor Yu and her family is now renting a single family home in Claremont. Housing on its own is so challenging and finding a an affordable house to rent or townhouse apartment um, in San Diego is already challenging. The state has also passed regulations that limit rent increases to 5% annually plus inflation to a maximum of 10%. That 10% increase has become a floor as opposed to a ceiling. And so uh, a lot of renters have seen that 10% increase just because now the state says you can do that. If it passes, this act would empower cities and counties to determine what the maximum annual increase would be. Similar measures have already been defeated twice before at the ballot box. Shannon says that the opposition, primarily corporate property owners, outspent their grassroots campaign by nearly three to one. And that opposition, including the California Apartment Association, is determined to defeat this new measure as well, stating that if passed, the proposed repeal would drastically slow down the construction of affordable housing, adversely impact homeowners and small landlords, and exacerbate the state's homelessness crisis. And to pass, this act needs a simple majority of the vote, 50% plus one.